a sinner about all of these things that Jesus can do. You know, we we know we have heard the, all the stories. How Jesus healed a blind man that was blind and he see. How Jesus healed a, a man that was crippled. He couldn't walk, but not to walk. We, we, when we tell someone who, who brought forth a person from the dead, brought them back to life, we can tell them all of these things. But the thing is, that's not good enough. In order for them to believe it for themselves, they have to see it for themselves. They have to see it for themselves to believe it. To actually to believe. But, but yet, those people today who have seen the magic you see the power of God. You see the power of the resurrected Lord Jesus Christ. Any of that saw and met him, they still don't believe that he's done. That he has the power. That God forget in realm. And you'll not believe he's done. And my friend, even, even creation sows the magic power of God. Sows the, the handwork that God can do. And what the Bible says, those who don't believe there's a God is a fool. David says this in the book of Psalms, chapter 14, verse 1. To the fool that stands for there is no God. You know, I'd like to remind you today is we're not the one to call people a fool. God is. God is. Because he said, how can you be so blinded that you cannot see that God created everything you see on earth? And people have even been talented to think that it came through a big rock through a big bend. Now, I like to remind them what the first chapter, what the first verse says, including all of your arguments. It says, In the beginning, God created. It doesn't say in the beginning of a rock, it doesn't say in the beginning of a big bend. It says, In the beginning, God. Everything. And, and they say, you know what? Even though they saw everything, they, they see everything, they still don't believe in God. Come look at John chapter 8. John chapter 8. Verse 45, 47. <clears throat> and, because, and because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Which of you can see me not of sin? And if I tell you the truth, why do ye not believe? He that is of God hears God's voice. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. So why doesn't the world believe in Jesus Christ? The sin will answer because he tells them the truth. That's why the world does not believe. They do not believe. Because he tells them the truth. You know, when a person goes to a court, they be forced. You know, they, 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 they put their hand on the Bible and they say, you you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, not they find the truth, so help me God. They say, yes, you. 
What is the percentage of them telling the truth? Very likely. They say it's just another book. It's full of fairy tales. You know what? I like to remind people of things. This book is not full of fairy tales. This book contains the truth. And more of our people, more of our uh, Republicans, those who are Democrat Republicans, people, we more of that there will be less and less heartache in our country today. But yet, but they could they do not believe the truth. They do not believe the truth. Because the truth is here is you tell the truth that man is a good man. Man is not good. But if God here tell that man is a no good, rotten sin. He'll tell you're a sinner. He said, you're not good enough. Because when they go to church, they don't want to pass the prayer of sin. They don't want to preach of what they've been doing all week. They want to go because they've been living in sin all week. They want to be filled with it. You know what? The job of a pastor is not to make a person feel good. But it's preach the truth. It's preach the truth. Six. God, God tells the truth that man needs to return. You know, and, and, and the only way for you to go to heaven isn't by the good deeds, but it's only by placing your faith in Christ alone and nothing more. Yeah. Nothing more. First we see is they saw the light of God. They saw the light of God. No one did it for thirty five verse thirty six on the text. God did, and again the next day, as John stood and saw a few disciples, looking upon Jesus as he was. He said, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Have you ever saw something special in your life before that you can't believe? This is what happened. They saw and recognized Jesus Christ as the Lamb of God. And we know a few weeks ago. Jesus is called the Lamb of God. Because he is the perfect sacrifice offering of God. Turn the book of 1 Peter, chapter 1. First Peter, chapter 1. Begin verse 18 through 19. For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corrupted things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your father, but with the precious blood of Christ, as a land well splendid and well spot. And so Jesus, as the Lamb of God, is a sacrifice. Of our sin and for, for fulfillment of the old testament system. It's by his sacrifice that I can commune with God in the story. And by the cover of his blood that we are spared from the spiritual death. In other words, you see you see Christ had it not. There was no other way. Christ had enough. It could walk, the Bible could walk the same in blood. There is no remission of sin. While Christ 
death on the cross, fear could not be forgiven of the sin and the trespass. While Christ dying, you and I will be on the way to hell. See, while the cross, while the death of the cross, there will be no, no forgiveness. While the cross, many times, will be dependent upon himself. What the cross fill the blank. What the cross? More there will be more and more people in hell because Christ never died. Would never came. You see, Christ had to die. You see, I you saying Christ had to die because he was the pure. And what I spot of sin. What I spot of sin. That is why we can't do it. And John, that's why we can't depend upon our own strength and our ability and work. It's not good enough for us to enter heaven unless you have placed your faith in the world. Then you are in. Because if you don't place your faith in Christ, you're depending upon your own good right your suffering instead of the righteousness of Christ. Because our rights are a filthy right. And that's why we need the righteousness of Christ because his rights are clean. I said it always. No. I did say our rights are dirty. Or filthy. Like, will you come to your, to eat meal with dirty hands? Of course not. You know what that is represented is our rightness when you come with dirty hands. But when you wash your hands, that's the rightness of Christ when it's clean. Our hands need to be pure. But our hands, spiritual speaking, are dirty all because we are not good because we need to depend upon the rightness of Christ. Second is, are you going to follow Christ? Are you going to follow Christ? No, I did for first step. <clears throat> And the two disciples heard him and speak and you follow Jesus. If you were asked today to quit the job and follow Jesus Christ, would you do it? You see, the disciples quit their job to be a disciple of Christ. And it wasn't easy for the disciples. They had days that they probably asked themselves, what is it worth? They had days that they said, what is it worth to quit my job? And be a disciple. Be a, a, a disciple of Christ. Be an a apostle of Christ. They said, what is it worth to quit a job? To be a disciple. Then I said, they had days. And they asked us some. But they had days of, of blessing for the be a disciple. Put the book of Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. For 24. Then said Jesus unto the disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take him cross, and follow me. Do you really think it was worth it for the disciples to leave all that all they had and to follow Jesus? I believe it was worth it. But the same question for us today. 
You probably have been asked this many times in life. Is it worth it? Is it worth to be a Christian? Is it worth it? Is it worth it to be a child of God? Do you believe that that is worth it? I personally believe it's worth it. If we are not, if we are not a slave to the world, but we are a child of the King. And one day we will be praising God for all of time. Where we will live in the dream. Listen, my friend, it is worth it every day. Because listen, we don't have any wonder. We don't have any question ourselves where we're going to spend the term at this time. If you know why, it's all simple. Because it's all simple. Because we know why, we're not dependent upon ourselves. We're not dependent upon our brightness. We're dependent upon what Christ has done for us. And we have placed our faith not on our good, but we place our faith in Him. Because we know we can do this. And just like the psalm says, it's going to be worth it all when we see Jesus face to face. You know what? Those who are hell, well, I thought it wasn't worth it. Those burning and dying in hell today, if it wasn't worth it, that I did not make it a part of my life. They are burning hell today and realizing the what they were doing. They were right. There is a God. They were right. There is a place called heaven. They were right. There is a place called heaven. But you know, it's too late for them because they thought they had God. They thought, listen, what does it all mean for all these? This is to serve as a power of death of what it was called. To follow Jesus when he called you to follow him. Nothing matters as much as your relationship with him. You now all the fame, all the fortunes, all the popularity a person has doesn't matter. Fit. Unless you have a relationship with God. That matters more than anything. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. Verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Everything else falls. So, if you truly follow Christ, is to put him first in your life and, and to surrender to his kingdom. It's to surrender. Thirdly, is what are you seeking? What are you seeking? No one says first story. Then Jesus turned a saw and fall and said to them, What seek you? They said to him, Right, which is say being mad, word, blue. Well, now, what are you seeking in this life? Are you seeking to have lots of money? Or to be famous? Or are you seeking something else? All else than all of that. 
Listen, there are the people today who are seeking something. You're seeking. You're seeking something more than money, more than fame. And they may look and look and look all the places. And they're still seeking. And still seeking. They're seeking something for them to make, make them happy. They have looked at everything they can think of and still comes out empty hands. They have looked and they thought. And that didn't help. They have looked in, in drugs. And so on. But again, they are still not happy. Can I tell you something today? People, people who are like, people that you know, and I'll miss them because they are looking at the wrong places. They're looking at the wrong, wrong places. They are looking, like I said, in a box and draw. Everything in the world is awful. You guys can't find happiness. I like to remind you today that our happiness is not found in drugs. Our happiness is not found in a bottle. But our happiness comes through the relationship with Christ. Because, listen, because they are looking. And at one time, they were still being this way until they find Christ. They were still being with us until they place their faith in Jesus Christ. But He will and He can fill that emptiness that they have been missing for all the time. And listen, because He's the hope. He's the whole of this world. He can feel the emptiness every one of this world. But yet, the world doesn't know. The world has tried and tried to get rid of Could they kick him out of school? They call it schools. They kick him out of the courthouse. They didn't try. They even tried to keep out when they banned the Bible from the public schools. When it took the, the King Commandments out of the courthouse. They tried everything. And even with this coronavirus, they shut down churches for a while. But yet they still cannot get rid of God. But yeah. Listen, he's the hope that we're just going to He's the answer that everyone needs to look for. Life is not he's the answer of the struggles. Because when people go to struggle, when people have a hard time, do they open the Bible? Or do they go to the Bible? Now, I believe this Bible, all the Bible, is put so if they can't find anything else. I see people who will take a Bible, take, take their Bible, and it'll do this. Just, just all. Because you know what? Because it's not open. Because he had it, it's not open. It's not open. You know what? There's, there's that's the answer. Not working. It's not drugs. It's not alcohol. But the Lord is Christ. Let's go to Titus chapter two. So what is it? Titus. Titus chapter two. He 
beginning of verse 13. <clears throat> God is looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearance of the great God in our Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all evil and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of the Lord. Bless you. This world needs a hope. This world, more than ever, needs the hope of Christ. Because you know what? That thing, Paul said to his young preacher, Titus, you know what? He said, Look, let me give a look. Not in things, not in the bridges. But it is for that blessed hope. You know what? I believe it's still today. Now, outside of these walls, we're looking for hope. And they're looking for all the wrong answers. Because you know what? Hope is not found in religion, it's not found in the church, thing, but the hope is found. I'll hold us down, Christ. And we want to try that we have hope. We can have hope of it and things here. Fourth thing, you see this prayer. He says, Come and see. Come and see. Verse 39 of text. <clears throat> he said to them, Come and see. They came and saw. What he did. And lo with him that day, for it was not the tenth hour. He reached that Christ gave him the invitation to come see for yourself. You know, son, that is what the invitation is to do. And I always mean it has been open to an open. He's come. He's come to me. He says, come. The Bible says later on, it says, come and see all you hear, and I will give you rest. No people. No one there with them. They're scared. They're afraid to do it. They're afraid. Because and you know what we believe on the main thing that he wants everyone to do is time and we are in. But let's, but he is in force anyone to be saved. It is our want. But listen. It is reject. It's not Christ. And they, they turn him down. It's not Christ. But in fact, it's their own. But listen, Jesus Christ is not forcing people to get saved. It's a personal choice. It's a personal choice. Today, Christ is not forcing people to get saved. But yeah. He's will. The Bible says he's not willing in any to perish, but that also comes to the end. He's not for him. But he would you like him to be saved? Yeah. Will more people get saved? No. No, I could have. The Bible said that hell has more of itself. What it means is that there will be more people dying and going to hell in heaven because they reject. They reject the plan of salvation. They reject that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. They reject that Christ has been. They reject everything that Christ had offered for eternal life. 
security and faith in Christ. They are rejecting. They are rejecting over 2,000 years ago. Listen. They're still rejecting him today. They rejected him when he was a baby. Rejected him when he came on his early ministry. Listen, the word still, still will continue to reject Christ today. Because they do not want to have anything to do with Christ. Because he tells people who they truly are. He tells them. He's not to make them so they hear to tell them the truth. And my friend, that's what we need when they they in our lives. Is to someone tell us the truth. Not to tell us fairy tales. Not to tell us what's a lie. But to tell us the truth. And that truth is man is a sinner. Man can't sit himself. He cannot be king on the shelf. But it's in Christ. In Christ. On the line. The main thing, I said, the main thing is. He wants everyone to be his cousin. But he is enforcing anyone to be so. If they don't want to. But if they reject him and tell him and tell all on him, because listen, because he does and only will have the keys of eternal life. He has the keys of eternal life. Or listen. Today, he comes to you. He comes to the same. He comes to Christ. Before it's too late. The question this morning is Have you came to the Lord? The Lord still has the invitation for him to reach the world. To come and see and judge the good on this side. Even though the world rejects, in the world, most of the world who don't believe, the invitation is still. Our body was so grateful this morning, just for now. Even though the world doesn't believe, most of the world doesn't believe. He still wants man and woman. Boys and girls, to come and see for yourself and believe on the one who has the answers, who owes the keys of eternal life, who owes the answers for anyone that is willing to accept, to believe on you. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless our mayor and high speak to us. Only you can do it. For the Christ name we ask for his sake. Amen. 325. <clears throat> 325. When we walk with the Lord in the light of His Word, what a glory He sets on our way. While we do His good will, He abides with us still, and with all who will trust.